Okay, no, I think we're going to, um, have you got to approve the minutes in order to what, what can't we do? Um, approving the minutes next time for the last, for both? You know, since 1958, you have been doing the first. So. No, no, I'm getting out uh, <laughs> the rest of the, not everyone's here. We were probably met since the last meeting, which was a week ago. Correct. There is a quorum. Yeah, okay. You can, so we can approve do. them. Otherwise, next week you'll be like, why don't I got two to sign? Yeah. I'll be. Okay. Um, did we get? Did you send the minutes? Ah, they're in the book. They're in the book. Yeah, for, see, for, uh, I haven't even looked at it. Uh, <laughs> fall by the wayside here. Okay. If the chair decides to put it off for a week, you can, the chair can. You read the minutes? The last meeting? Well, I just glanced at them. Glanced at them, said, signed them. I did the same thing. <laughs> so now you gotta, now you gotta proceed. Well, let's put all of our faith in Martha. She always makes good minutes. Okay. We'll approve the minutes. If we have a problem later, we'll fix it. Do you want a motion? Or? Yes. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from. What was the date? It was 15th. April 13th. 15th. 15th. Okay, Second. Set? Okay. So everybody's in agreement. Okay, minutes are approved. All right. So the next the next thing is so we have three um, renewals for liquor license from uh, you should just do public comments. Anybody have any public comments? Oh, that should be missed, yeah. legally. I think that needs to be. Yeah, I do. Does anybody have a comment? Something they want to bring up? Public? Well, I just wanted to talk about the roads, but yeah, that's coming up, right? Um, yes, we're going to. Uh, the storm event part of it's coming talking, up. We aren't really talking about roads in general, but is yours related to the floods and the. No, uh, I'm just wondering about um, when the. You know we're going to be able to use the road to get we're trying to build and so trying to get trucks up there and stuff so we're just curious as to what the time of is and that kind of thing okay well all right we can do it right now but um, on densmore hill road and yeah. your, your name is michelle robert so how far up Densmore Hill are you building? Um, we're just um, right by Gary Tractors, or yeah. right in the, that is. yeah. Um, Dave, can you explain what's... Yep, I believe Michelle left a message on my machine today, and um, my understanding is, is that Bill may have spoken to them right. this <laughs> morning or yesterday. Uh, the roads are still posted at this point in time. Um, I understand that. And with all the activity and rainstorms that we have, Densmore Hill, you know, we just built Reef Jennyville. Um, Densmore Hill is still washed out. So I think that, I don't know if Bill, Bill gave you, he did. said to call back. He said um, to check back next yeah. week, but I mean, it's like, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out formalize what we can expect or. So the roads are posted until May 15th, um, you know, and if it dries out or becomes suitable before the 15th, um, we pull the postings down uh, and let the trucks get through. I think that prior to this, you had either talked to Bill and, and gained some permission to get in right. early morning. Right. Um, you know, but with the weather and the roads as they are, it's just not, you know, we're, we're, it's across the board. We're just not allowing heavy trucks to get in and out of there until we can get the roads to a more suitable place. Okay. Well, I, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of vague, and I didn't know if they had some plans as to when they were planning on grading and that kind of stuff. Because it's really an actually, in, you know, it's not like mud, but it's it does need grading. So I just didn't know if there was a time frame or a schedule or whatever. I mean, we've got people that are waiting on us, so we can let them know. You know. So that does get to some of the storm activity. Um, actually, Densmore Hill is not the worst of the crew. Um, we're presently um, in the midst of, we got um, Advent Hill is pretty bad as is um, Town Farm Road. You know, 
you know, we've got an extensive amount of damage that we need to take care of. Um, you know, we will get to, you know, we're essentially working through the priorities and we'll get to Densmore when some of the other ones, you know, that a car can actually fall into, you know, we get those kind of filled up and, and get those kind of going. So um, I would, you know, is, Simply, you know, the postings are seasonal and they're not always cut and dry. And we try and, you know, pull the posting as soon as we feel as though it's feasible. Um, you were able to get some trucks in there. Right. Some of those did go in the afternoon and, you know, did some damage to the roads. Well, actually, they didn't really do any damage to the roads. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not so sure. imagine, yeah, I know, but just imagine, you know, cement trucks doing that town-wide. That, that's an issue for us. So yeah. No, I understand that. You know, I think Bill tried his best to, to alleviate that and get you in and out of there. And at this point in time, I think you just need to, I think, you know, I would give us into, you know, next week before you give Bill a call back and see how things are progressing. Okay. All right. It doesn't look like it's going to look freezing. No. Anymore, so just, uh, yeah, the, the, you do understand the early morning idea is the road's frozen. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Well, we are not going to have any. Right. That's well, I mean, it's, it, yeah, I mean, it ran into the afternoon only because there was, you know, a few trucks that came in and by the time they, you know, did and then left. So, um, I had called and left a message and, and he didn't call me back and when he did it was later in the morning and um, so I had, the trucks were already out of the way because once you order concrete, you, you know, you can't like just not have him come. So um, we didn't hear from him so we just thought that we were okay and it, it wasn't. So I apologize to him, you know, I'm sorry that that happened. And, we don't get very good phone service up there. So he called on my cell phone and I don't know, he probably didn't have my house number. So it was just a combination of miscommunication between between both of us. So but I'm I'm not here to cause a problem. I'm just here to try to figure out what where we can move because we have people that are, you know, asking us that are working for us and they're like chomping at the bit to get going because they haven't been working all winter. So um, I will we'll okay. do the best that we can. Yeah. I mean, we just got Jennyville open last Wednesday, so yeah. no, it's, it's kind of touch and go. Down there. So. But, no, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to the liquor. So we've got three. Three renewals for the liquor license and uh, the BG's Market, um, Alcohol Tavern, and it's now Jake's, which used to be Mike's. Is it Jake's Market? Or just Jake's? I'm not sure where the name is on here. Let you look. This is the tavern. Well, it says park. here, Jake. It's right there. Yeah, it's so. the main park. This, this, is, this looks different. I guess it's a different kind of. But it says doing business as Mike's store and collectible, so I think yeah. they're going to keep the name, right? Yeah. All right, so I'll have to enter. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good. Great. Let's say Jake's Market doing business as. Jake's Market TBA. I know. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, are we all good with renewing these licenses? Yes. 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 Okay. okay. So, we'll get that in the minutes that we approve that and we will sign them. We can do that right now, I guess. Um, Oh, I'm 
Sorry. Good. Do we have the rice? No, we see. Is this the Jake's one? Yeah. I saw it. Oh, you're missing a sheet. It fell off the back. Did you. It was here. I'm ready to go. Yep, here it is. I'm sorry. Stapled right here. Oh, okay. Oh. I guess uh, that's under control. We can talk about the storm event. So this is a little bit of an update and um, steps we're looking to take going forward. So here's some pictures. Um, it's not all the pictures, but um, some of the main damage that we sustained. Um, We sustained some pretty significant damage on Jennyville Road, um, a little bit on Best, uh, Jenny Road, on Densmore Hill Road. Uh, we had some, we had a culvert issue on Densmore Hill. Um, Town, Farm hit, uh, Town Farm Road, Advent got hit particularly good. Um, there's bits and pieces on, say, Brothers, on Weed. Um, Pretty big setback. Uh, we also had uh, on Advent coming down towards Brothers, um, there are three culverts that failed there, uh, took out kind of the bank. Uh, as you're coming around from, there's a kind of a new house at the top of, as you're coming from Brothers up Advent, kind of come up a hill. And uh, that corner, that the bank has kind of has been washed out. There's a little bit of a picture there. Um, three culverts there are, are were plugged and weren't working. We're going to look to replace those. Uh, two more on Advent as you get towards the animal farm and uh, down towards a house that's got, or, or towards the house that has the miller kind of back end of a tractor trailer truck. It's a miller truck there. Yeah. Um, another culvert there. Uh, there's a culvert up on Hartman Hill that uh, went, uh, and there's two significant culverts that we're going to look to mitigate um, sooner rather than later. There's a culvert on Jennyville that um, just simply, I think this one uh, has been an issue to us in the past. And there is a culvert on Mace Hill Road um, that is paved road and, and that is beat up in pretty rough shape. So um, we're looking to hope to kind of swap those, the Jennyville uh, one and the Mace Hill one as kind of a mitigation effort, whether that money comes through perhaps some FEMA money 
or when it comes to the state of Vermont, but we need to address them because uh, particularly the one on Jennyville was kind of the cause of the washout on Jennyville. Well, what was the other Jennyville? Mace Hill Road, just up from the Four Corners intersection there. Uh, did you have any problem with that, this storm? Uh, it backed up. It almost, uh, there's a woman, so there's a White House on the corner, a woman next to the White House down upstream from that. Uh, it didn't go into her house, but it went up to like where a generator is. The house is kind of low. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about... Um, Right on the yep. Yeah, that that is uh, been on the list for a long, long time, and it's an old uh, one of the problems with changing it. It's an antique. <laughs> it's an old stove. It's only about kind of big enough. It's that. Well, it's gonna. <laughs> My car's going to go off of it pretty soon. I mean, it's, it's now has, you know, there's failure over the, the head wall and, and the, the concrete start that came in there. So it's low and it needs to be wide. Major project. It is, yeah. Uh, so I don't even know what uh, we could plan for as long as it had to get hopefully some aid for us. State of Vermont was looking at it today with Bill and I, uh, both uh, District 4 garage and uh, the stream alteration person. Um, again, if if it's, you know, FEMA has mitigation money, if it's not part of the FEMA mitigation money, it'll be part of the, the state structures grant. Um, it's pretty well. One of the issues. It's pretty that, toast. One of the issues on that one was when they posted the road signs that are right up here. Yep. That was going to be the detour. It is, or seems to be. Not sure why we don't have a posting out on our road, but um, we, yeah, because well, our you could our culvert is not stronger than their culvert. No, and no, they near as strong. Bypass. Yeah, so that doesn't, that doesn't make any culvert. sense at all. Gordon, no. I'm not following it. So there's a No, this is a culvert in four corners. The first. Yes. Okay. Right. Just yeah. as you head up Mace Hills, right there. Yeah. Okay. And the signs are out front here that says the bridge is posted. It's the bridge in Fieldsville. Yeah. And they're and they're also on the other end saying no trucks over what is the lane? I forget. I don't remember the lane. It's actually it, fairly light load. It, it wouldn't allow the town to even carry loads of sand, I don't think. If you adhered strictly to it, am I right or wrong? Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that. It doesn't seem to affect West Windsor, but um, no. they yeah. seem to run their trucks over all day. Everybody long. seems to ignore the posting signs. But the detour would be over this cold and sure. around on uh, well, uh, Mace Hill. Well, it shouldn't be because our road has a weight, that road has a weight limit. I know. On it. I'm not sure if there's a posting sign on, on um, what's the one coming from? The horseshoe there. Bowers. Bowers. So it never made any sense right from when they put the signs up. It still doesn't. We have problems with the just above the Bowers on Lover's Lane. The one yeah, Mark Johnson, that's who we talked about. Mm -hmm. so Phil, that's minor. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Yes. I gotta there tell you. Is. It's, yeah, no, it's pretty well on the list. <laughs> Um, um, but from a detour perspective, there was we wouldn't be in good shape there. Well, that's kind of the way they some of them go, yeah. and uh, so this this culvert is seeing some some traffic that it shouldn't be, uh, which is comp, which does help compound the problem. Yeah. So um, for those that that decide to do that, so. What, Anyway, the larger picture here, you know, the two culverts, you know, we'll have to see how this goes. Um, they need to do a hydrology study on it to determine, you know, the sizing of it. They need to kind of look at the flow of the water and, and kind of... Who's this city member? The FEMA person? Uh, no, it was Michael Blakesley from District 4, Vermont Agency of Transportation. District 4, and it was Scott Jensen, um, State of Vermont Stream Alterations Permit. Okay. 
Stream alterations. Uh, Official? Uh, sure. So it needs to do, you know, they need to do a hydrology study and we'll determine kind of the best way to move forward with that. But both of those are kind of, um, uh, the other one may have a little bit of old fashioned aspects to it as well, but um, you know, completely caused, caused the Jennyville to, to How wash old out. Old fashioned, is it stone or concrete? Parts of it are stone. Yeah. Both yeah, of them. It's been a problem for quite a while. And, uh, it's all of Katie Brook, isn't it, coming down? Uh, yep. And then it has to go under the road to get yep. to it. So it, the yeah. culvert itself is undersized. You know, again, we were looking at it today, and it was like maybe that much space in between the water and the culvert. Um, but just the angle of it as well. I mean, the water just jumped, you know, just jumped the bank and went right down the road. Um, that was kind of a problem. Well, that. down the road, they'd have to go to get, find a way out. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it, so it jumped, you know, so the culvert, so Katie Brook kind of comes down behind Godette's house yeah. there, the trailer, right? And then kind of comes underneath Jennyville. Jennyville. So right here, this corner is where it jumped, and then it just flowed this way and took out 100 yards of road, yeah. you know, 100. 50 yards of road. Did it go across the road? Um, it did make its way partially across the road, but pretty well, yeah. It went down. One of those pictures there is it going right down the road, so. Yeah. Um, now, you mentioned three other culverts failing. I forgot where we were on Edmund Hill. Yep. Uh, did they fail or were they not cleaned out? Um, they were undersized at 15 inches, and they were plugged, and um, they're basically junk. That's a really steep slope there, where, where, where the culverts were crossing on the iPad, so that water had to be really ripping. So every time you take out uh, a culvert, you have to put one back that's a new standard, right? We, at a minimum, it, you know, so all the culverts that we've taken out, we've up, we've done for a reason, and that's essentially to upsize it. So those three on Advent will get upsized. Um, the two farther down Advent will get upsized. The two, the one on Jennyville and the one on Mace Hill would get upsized. They're all going to get upsized. Um, uh, right? I mean, it's not up to the town of Heartland to say, well, we're just going to put back in what we have there. Oh, well, we could if we wanted to. But Can you? I mean, it would be foolish. Well, the three on Advent, we can't because they're 15 inch. So they should be a minimum of 18 inch state standard. Okay. That's so we've standard. signed the state standards to yeah. say that we will do that. I mean, it would be silly for us to stick, you know, maybe an 18 inch that we put in there. Um, I can't remember what Scott said, but, um, you know, a couple of the other ones farther down Advent got upsized to. 24, I think. So they'll tell you. Yep, they tell us. <laughs> yeah, and so he also makes a determination. So if it's a stream such as the one on Jennyville, well, um, Katie Brook, or I'm not sure which the one is that flows next to along Route 12 there. Called the Mace Hill one. Alder Milton, I don't know what it's called. Um, those we need a specific permit to, you know, is a little bit more technical, and they'll do a hydrology study and they'll determine the size of it. The other ones are more of a seasonal issue, and he kind of eyeballs them and gives a recommendation on what it should be upsized to. So, but the five that we did on Heartland Hill last year, all got, we upsized all of those um, when we did that one. You know, we had problems there, still had a little bit of a problem this time. Um, but the culverts acted like they should. Um, but we upsized all five of those when we did that. So, you know, I'm thinking about the one time the, the stone header on the culvert on Weed Road that's coming out. It's right where water laying in. 
I should tell Bill that I will take that. Okay. But um, so from a larger picture, those are some, and we'll need to, the one up on Hartwood Hill, Gordon is kind of a temporary one until we get up there. It's kind of long and interferes with a driveway culvert that's up there, but um, we'll end up re-gigging that and putting that in a little bit better. It was kind yeah, of a... I'm to dug it up. Yeah. And I see they found it. He said, well, if we find a couple, it's a little bit bigger. We can just slip it over the end and put it back together. That's obviously what they did. So it's this one. Yeah, that one. The other, there's still the, on the intake on that one, it's still the junky part of it. So we'll kind of deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, but the bigger story here is, obviously, this is a setback um, for the town it interferes with our spring grading um, just about anything else spring couldn't have come at a worse time so we've got a couple we're looking at a couple options here um, you know we could have gone or can go two ways I think we've we determined one way to go um, and that is so we can and every town is different, every town is kind of grappling with this, um, but we can try and look to bring in subcontractors to do this work and, and kind of concentrate on what we're doing um, for normal spring cleanup. Uh, however, uh, we need to follow the procurement policy, whether it's our own or the, the federal procurement policy. You know, that's a minimum of five weeks, I think. Um, you know, by the time we write an RFP, advertise it, accept somebody, and then they'd have to be able to come in here and the timing that they have to come in here. Um, or we can do the work ourselves um, and maybe bring somebody else in to do some of the spring stuff. Um, we are kind of looking to really do most of it ourselves, and perhaps lease some equipment. Um, one piece of equipment that we lease would be um, via FEMA, would be part of the FEMA project. Um, and the other one would be to bring in a second grader um, so that we can swap one person, probably skip over to a grader and do the town roads. And then we would keep one grader and do the cleanup that we need to do um, on, the, on the runoff and that kind of stuff. Because we would pull skip over, kind of leaves us short a driver. We haven't quite figured that out. Um, we haven't talked to him, but John Dumas could be a potential, you know, to simply subcontract him and put him in the truck and have him haul the material. You see, you see license? Uh, my understanding is that he is. Um, but again, we don't have all the pieces together here. Mm -hmm. um, however, that would keep us moving. Uh, they're already doing a lot of the work. We're already moving forward. Um, five weeks from now, we could potentially be done. Um, it's really, you know, the other part of this that's lagging, you know, and if we are doing it, you know, the other stuff is sitting there. Um, so I think that this is kind of a good middle of the road way to go. Um, again, uh, so what we're, we'd be looking to do is bring in a grader um, to do the town roads while we concentrate on the storm stuff. Uh, and uh, an excavator to do a lot of the culvert work. Um, I believe the excavator would be covered under the FEMA stuff. Uh, With or without an operator? Um, the operator would come most uh, with Doug. We would put our own guy into it. We would lease yeah. the excavator. Yep. Um, we see excavator. If we we have shopped around and got pricing on that, so we don't need to do a whole lot more on that. Um, you know, if we subcontract out that excavator and the guy, we got to put it out to bid, which puts us behind. That, that too, the grader too. Also. So the grader. Um, the, I don't think we're going to be able to find a grader and an operator. So, the, so the grader would be on us. Mr. Rental. Yeah. Yep. So the grader would be our expense. But the thought here is, is that as long as our crew is working on FEMA-related project, FEMA will take care of that. We will get reimbursed by FEMA for the man hours, the trucks, the materials, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So essentially. 
you take whatever money you would have been putting into personnel and trucks and gas, and you put that towards the greater. You pull Skip over, put him in the greater, and then we, you know, again, we have to plug in that extra driver someplace. Um, we can tell you this, it, is it feasible to be able to even put our hands on a greater at this point? I mean, I, it is. Yep, there's, so there's two. Um, so there is um, Cat up in Williston, I forget. Um, uh, I don't know, Gordon, if you remember what, uh, I'm trying to think of the name. The company are, John. And John Deere out of uh, Springfield. Um, you know, so just to give you a little taste, for a month, uh, the one up in Williston, they would drop it off and pick it up is 8800 bucks. Um, and the one out of Springfield is 9500 bucks. Um, actually goes down, if you keep it for two months, it's 15800 for two months. Um, but we're thinking that we need it for four to six weeks. Um, and again, the $8,800 for the greater, um, we would have spent on labor and other things on our four to five guys during four week stretch of time mm -hmm. that they'll be involved in the FEMA project. So that's kind of a way to move forward uh, and do this um, and to get reimbursed for the work that we're doing on this, except for the greater. Um, the only hiccup in all of this is, of course, we don't get the FEMA funding for, you know, 18 months. Yeah. Well, there's no money in the highway. What's that? We've got money in the highway. So money in the highway, we do. And this is why, Mary, if you recall a conversation about savings accounts and things. I talked about Norwich and they have a policy on keeping a certain percentage of the fund balance. So when they had, you know, this is kind of a hiccup compared to what Norwich experienced, they, they had like multi-million dollar damage, um, although they had an $850,000, you know, savings, you know, that helped bridge the gap. So if we didn't have that surplus in, in the highway, we'd be, we'd be sucking wind. You know, we would literally have to go and get a, you know, a revenue anticipation note to kind of hold this over. Um, as it is, we still have four months, five months to go until our first tax collection day in September, but we think we can, we think we can make it. Um, so it is, um, you know, it's just, I'll admit, I mean, these experiences are just miserable for everybody. You know, Bill, I mean, it's just extra. Everything needs to be documented. Everything needs to be pictures taken. We need to actually physically um, measure the areas um, that we put material in. Um, you know, it needs to be documented with, um, the, what's it called, the, the satellite numbers as to where the location is and all this, that, and people's hours and where they're going and this, that, and everything else. So it's not a pleasant experience, but I mean, it is reimbursement for storm damage. Um, we do seem to be, this, again, I put in my email, this is my second one in 22 months that I've been here. Um, this is our second one and our third event, and we're always good for a storm that we have significant amount of blowdowns on. So you can see how last time, the July 1st storm, 2017, we trucked through it, we kind of put our heads down, and we did it, but we were significantly behind. I think we're still behind from it. Um, we didn't do any paving that year. Um, you know, it took us, I don't know, for how long to kind of fix that, that hill that had some crevasses coming down and stuff like that. So this is kind of a way to, you know, and at that point in time, I think I said, you know, we were slow to realize the need for help. Um, you know, this isn't quite calling out the cavalry, but I think it's a way to start to get the roads because, you know, if you look at these pictures, you know, that's damage that needs to be addressed. But if you go around town and drive on, I'm trying to think where I was today, but uh, there are, you know, it's spring and we had started to make some progress with our spring grading, but it came to an abrupt halt. 
and sure. Well, I, I think what you're saying, Dave, is that the storm really impacted all the roads because you had we had done some grading and a lot of fill, and a number of the roads were really in good shape for this time of the year, and. And you know, I'm just thinking of the roads around uh, the till there. I mean, I just I went home to get the truck the other day just because I wasn't sure I could get through. But the point is, is that it set us back immensely on these roads, but it also set us back on the other roads. Yeah. Right? My assessment of Harland Hill Road is that and the mud came kind of late after we thought maybe it wasn't going to get somebody. And I, I can't remember a year recently when it is as bad as it is right now. And it's a torture to get. If you decided to go to Woodstock by way of Harland Hill, mm -hmm. you would regret it. <laughs> and it's just awful, and it and it's not hard enough to grade. I mean, it's all. Um, so Harland Hill is not. Um, although the the other places, the the lower elevations have dried up quicker quick, than quicker. than you know the Harland Hills. You know, it's kind of Harland's a little tough in that respect. So like the the cream pots, the garvins, the, the Harland Hills. Um, you know, stayed. You know. Densmore may even still have some frozen spots. I don't know, but yeah. um, you know that area in there is just um, you know it stays. Well, I'm sure there's still there's still frozen forever. I some of the shaded places. Um, so that's you know really you know as it is I still think we're cutting it a little lean, but you know I say that we. You know, take the ins. You know, we, we won't need the excavator for a little bit. We have other cleanup work to do. Um, but you're going to use that to install some culverts. We're going to, yeah, because actually, and, and we had the stream alteration guy with us. Um, but so, for instance, in a couple of the places, particularly on Advent, where you've got silt or, or other factors that have kind of you know the, the 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 area where the water seems to have found its way down at this point is not necessarily kind of the, the natural stream part of it. So we're probably going to dig a little bit up hill to get the flow back into the area that the culvert should be. And the backhoe is just way kind of too small. Plus. You know, we talked about it a little, a little bit, but um, you know, some of those places it's just going to be easier to trench it with the back, with the back, with the excavator and lay down the pipe and be done with it. Will the state let us go into the stream? He was with us today. That's what I. That's he what was I was right there. Was he was right there with us. Oh. Well, so for instance, the one by the donkey farm um, yeah. is what I'm going to call it. So there's, you know, hit, you know. And reasons that we need to do some of the things that we should do that we maybe have gotten away from. So it's kind of a low area with, you know, hill on both sides. And you can see where the sediment has just accumulated in certain spots in this wetland area. So we're almost actually getting back in and we're going to trench a little bit more of the natural flow of it. Whereas the sediment from the road actually has pushed it a little bit mm -hmm. away from where it should be. saying that the outlet of the column has created a delta of the inlet, actually. Oh, oh, the, the, the inlet side of it. Inlet. So it's not the culvert that's creating it. It's 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 Just material off that hill. material washing coming down the road. Rain events such like this getting yeah. pushed down the road and finding its way into this low area where the water well, kind of comes. No such thing as too cold. It's a lot. Anyways, <laughs> but I'm thinking of another problem that sometimes happens is the outlet of the culvert 
and this material yeah. makes its way through the colon yeah. and then it slows down and deposits and then it, it tends to dam up and, and, and plug the colon from the bottom end. So think of almost the same situation, but it's coming down. Yeah, the, the, it's instead of coming, instead of being pushed out the culvert, the, the, the gravity of the road is kind of in the, in the water running down the road is pushing it from both sides kind of into this yeah. wetland area and it's kind of, it's kind of, and then it kind of flattens and then kind of finds its way and now the water instead of coming straight down kind of goes this way and a little bit that way and yeah. so it's um, that's just one of them but um, there's a couple different areas it's it becomes pretty apparent when you sit there and kind of look at it um, so we had plans for culverts for this summer so that sounds like we're setting that aside for now and maybe, maybe we'll get to them. So we still have a project going on this spring that um, that we, on Mace Hill, we're going to be doing ditching and um, and some, some culvert replacement, three or four of those. But... Um, we will add these. I don't think we really had figured out what we were going to do for color replacement after that. Um, again, it kind of coincides with the hydro connected areas, but um, you know, obviously, you know, these are an issue. These these failed or were undersized or were in service the way they should have been. So we're there, we're touched, we'll feel it, uh, might as well replace it and get us, you know, those six will be done. So um, we have a driveway permit. Um, but we also have driveways that, you know, part of this Ellison Road piece just down from it is a driveway that washed out, bringing the volume on tilts and you know, threefold, and then also all sorts of sediment. Um, would it help us at that point as far as the, the land on this driveway affecting the town road and the culverts? Um, for the most part, yes. So some of this comes to, you know, permit, you know, driveway permits and, you know, follow up and, and design of the driveway and how this is going to flow onto the road. And, um, you know, so there is that. And then plus, I think that Personally, I think we have probably a fair amount of development that we don't see a driveway permit for. Hmm. Who's responsible for culvert that is put in the ditch so someone to get to their house? So the, the property owner is responsible for their driveway culvert and their driveway. So if they're not unplugging it, it may create an issue for the person so downstream. Yeah, so this happens all the time. Yeah. Um, there are some instances that we will simply, if we're there, or it's just enough of an issue to the surrounding neighborhood. Heartland Hill is a, an example. We just went in and swapped it out for a bigger one. Um, didn't ask, and you know, we just went in. Sure, to, she was pretty thankful that we did it, but um, we just swapped it out because of the, the damage done downstream. We were there, um, FEMA covered it, um, so we swapped it out. So there are instances where we will kind of take it into our own hands, but, um, you know, otherwise, you know, the several hundred that we have already that don't belong to property owners um, are very difficult to maintain, so if you were to add you know, we've got 1,500 parcels in town, so if we had another 1,500 culverts to our inventory that we were responsible for, you know, started doing the math. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's kind of why that split is. It's understandable, though, if it's a real problem for a home, homeowner to maintain a culvert, depending on who they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, it's it's not necessarily an easy thing. They don't, not all 1,500 have a couple. 
Thank goodness. Fourteen ninety nine. Those large tracts of trees don't. Yeah. Even the hay fields tend to have some sort of an some entrance and exit, and yeah. generally don't have a culvert. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, this is, uh, we are expecting this to be declared a FEMA event. Um, I think that, um, you know, based upon that, you know, we're looking to take this step and try and keep the boat from capsizing per se. Um, the math, you know, without getting down and doing the pennies to pennies, you know, seems to one for the other, you know, it's a matter of, okay, our guys do that, we lease this and utilize that. Um, you know, is a wash, it's just that the, the, the revenue received is it's after the fact. I mean, one example is the $25,000, 35,000, can't remember, 30, I didn't even meant 60, I take that back, that we received for, uh, Jennyville Road from Hurricane Irene came in this year. You know, um, that just didn't quite have the follow up by us or the state for that matter. Um, just kind of fought, fell through the cracks. But um, I would expect this isn't quite as extravagant as the July 1st storm. That took maybe 18 months to get that money. Um, seems what, about right. What, um I do worry about the politics. Um, and, and are you, is the state pretty confident that this will go through at the federal level? Um, my understanding is is that Vermont has a $1 million threshold. My understanding is, is Wyndham County hit that uh, or has hit its threshold. Um, I don't believe that he has the ability to deviate from that. Okay, that's good. And, um, yeah, I, I don't think him and Governor Scott are at odds. So, um, you know, I, I think that the governor was actually not in favor of something in the last time around, and uh, we still got the funding. So, okay. I mean, even California got his wildflower, wild, wild fire. fire. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, that's good. Um, I, um, I think I mentioned to you, Dave, I saw you Friday afternoon. Um, I drove up to Rochester Friday morning and then up to, through Hancock and up to Warren. And the state roads are got hammered 107, 100. Um, do you think any of that is going to affect our local paving job start in May? Have you heard from Pike? Or, you know, are they going to be dragged across the state now as we emergency? Uh, I hope not. Um, yeah. You never know. Um, hopefully, Pike just puts more guys on or something to that effect. Yeah. Um, I actually haven't heard on that. And just given all the load that we'll, extra load we'll have, um, uh, would we be ready to have Pike come? Uh, we hope. Um, I think that we're, I mean, they're going to do the ditching. Um, they're going to do most of the paving. We have to put down uh, material uh, on the shoulders after the fact. But I think that, um, you know, I think that we're um, somewhat ready for that. I mean, obviously, this doesn't help. You know, this is just one, you know, I'll be honest. If, if it got delayed um, six weeks, if it was guaranteed six weeks, I'd probably say, you know what, that's okay. It's okay. But, I, but, you know, delays don't go six weeks. They go from six to a year, right. you know. So right. I would prefer to keep that. But, um, you know, it's not anything at this point isn't really opportune. Mm -hmm. But right. I'm just kind of yeah. well, dealing well, with it. The other thing that comes to mind for me is that the guys drive down to the town drives at 3 o'clock, is it? In the day? 315. Yeah. Uh, what about some overtime? Uh, we, Bill and I talked about overtime. They seem to be willing to do some overtime at this point in time. Um, I think it's a matter of, you know, I think we kind of got to take the step and see, you know, 
how this goes. So I, yeah, I think that um, my understanding is is they're willing to put in the 10 hour days. Um, I believe, and we have to double check with FEMA, but I believe over time is part of the, the reimbursement. Uh, as long as we track it, so I think that um, yeah, we'd be we would need to probably look at doing that, and putting something. Okay, you you raised the yellow flag before, saying that uh, FEMA um, had clear cut requirements from measuring um, the size of the of the, of, of the hole in the road to uh, photographing. Um, does Bill need support for that? And is there anything that we can help orchestrate a change and support you to make sure that we get all the paperwork done correctly? So I think that the simple message from me would be, you know, it kind of ties into my last my last meeting. You know, I think it just simply, yeah. you know, when something goes wrong, it pulls the ship. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, you know, to have, uh, you know, I think I'm outlining, you know, what would resemble an assistant position. Um, I don't think I need somebody to dictate notes for me, but I mm -hmm. think I've identified a good number of things that would take things off of my plate and put it on somebody else's, mm -hmm. um, including maybe a little bit more oversight on the driveway permits. Um, that would free me up a little bit more to concentrate on some of this when something does happen. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, I guess I'll just say it. I think that, you know, the next step down the road would be, you know, I, I kind of put it out there that maybe we can do a lot of this with subcontracting work. I do think one extra highway person would probably be beneficial. Um, I think that, um, you know, we don't seem to be going the other way, you know, we don't seem to be getting nice dry not weather. Um, you know, we're coming off a horrendous winter. You know, we're having a horrendous spring. We had a bad yeah. fall. We had a storm event last July. Um, you know, it's cyclical, you know, but I think that, you know, talk about 1958, you know, I think we've had five guys since 1958, you know, along with a select board title, select men title, and the fact that we did the minutes first on the agenda, you know, um, yet, you know, and Hiram did go over and help the highway crew, and, and Bob backed off that a little bit, and I'm and kind of looked at the position, you know, concentrating on kind of the overall picture, but, um, you know, you got more cars, you got more traffic, we got more issues, we got more oversight from the state and more statutory obligations to fulfill. Um, so I think that, you know, at some point in time, that would be the next step um, in where we're going. And, you know, again, looking at the materials that we're using um, and up that a little bit. And then I would say then, I think we've gotten to a place of much more comfort. Mm -hmm. um, rather than trying to react or, you know, literally things, you know, sitting on our plate as we kind of, you know, deal with some of the things that kind of come up, mm -hmm. um, you know. It sounds so, like if you can get John doing this, that would be very really good. If you can't, possibly you should try to find someone else. Yeah, I don't know what that looks like yet, but, um, you know, I think that... Um, you know, I think that we need two trucks bringing material out to, you know, if Doug's in the greater working on the, in the storm event stuff, um, two trucks would be beneficial and, and you know, we'll kind of twiddle our thumbs with just one truck. It's just not moving material quick enough. Is it broken? The car? I took it. it you know, it's, it's on the chair. I tried to. I tried to change it. I tried to. You know, move it forward because 
I don't want to stuck on like five clients. It's just it's wrong. Like electronic copy. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It sets itself. Yeah. Well, somehow it. I came in this today and it was not right. Thanks, so Hubert. I. Maybe the satellite fell on the sky. I don't know if it's electronic. Yeah. I, Storms in Denver over here, Tom McClellan. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. First, I don't have anything else. The year 2000, like a little bit late, you know, um, a little after the fact. I lost years on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of overtime on that one. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm, I guess just, I hope the morale keeps up with the shop and, you know, um, that they took this week. Um, and there's a lot of work out there, so please pass along. Thank you. It's kind of depressing to see your work wash away. Yes. You know, that's the frustrating piece. You know? yeah. I just, uh, I just, um, That's all I got. I was one general thing. Uh, Bob Stacy sent us out the water burner agent. No, he said it, didn't he? Well, we but, we had it in our packets. Uh, yeah, so you got to understand how my how they set me up when I came on. So that that comes into. So the Vermont data came from Vermont Digger. So that comes into Bob's old email address that gets sent to me. When it pops up, I magically think it's my email. So when I forward it, I think it's from me, but it's, it's Bob's old email address. So it came from. So it's the same thing we saw. You know, it was actually different. It was an updated. It was a little bit of an updated story. Yeah. That's very good. Very good. Yeah. And then. Stand by it. 